The issue of loudness or volume has been a concern in the audio industry for years. It's become an especially hot topic since digital processing has allowed the level of audio to rise to new heights for all types of productions, music and post. On the music side, debate centers on the infamous loudness wars, where artists and producers try to make their recordings louder than everybody else's in an often misguided effort to draw the listener's attention when those tracks are heard in sequence with other music, and despite the negative consequences to the quality of the sound. In the post-production area, loudness issues have focused on different concerns. One is significant inconsistencies in average level between one TV program and the next, or between the trailers and the film in theaters. Even more prominent has been the question of TV commercials and promos that are jarringly louder than the program material they interrupt. Both industry professionals and consumers have been complaining about these issues for years, but for a long time little was done about it, except pretty much for all the lip service. Recently, in the music industry, a lot of attention has been paid to the negative effect of excessive level on the quality of the mixes, and some prominent artists have joined the efforts of industry pros, especially mastering engineers, to convince music makers to reduce the level of their efforts at least to the point where there won't be such a noticeable negative effect on the impact and dynamic character of the music. It's an uphill battle, because those voices of moderation have no way to enforce any kind of loudness limit, even if it does demonstrably improve the quality of musical sound. Approaching a standard of more reasonable levels is entirely a matter of optional compliance, and the race for loudness has become ingrained as industry practice. But in the post-production world, in particular the broadcast industry, Things are a little different. While the distribution of digital recordings of music is unregulated, as far as level goes, broadcasts are regulated, providing the opportunity for the governing bodies to set some standards for loudness. Over the last 10 years, in response to feedback from the industry and consumers, strict regulations have been put into place regarding audio levels. Conforming to those regulations is the main function of the remaining two processors in the RX suite, insight and loudness control. The whole issue of loudness is all the more complicated to deal with because of the way loudness is typically measured with today's digital production systems. Digital metering generally shows peak levels as a warning to help avoid digital clipping. But the perception of loudness is based not on peak levels, but on average program levels. Analog recording systems kind of enforce a maximum average level, which does correspond to how loud something sounds perceptually, thanks to the limitations of that medium. Digital which doesn't share those limitations, makes it possible to crank up level to a much greater degree without technical flaws like clipping, even though those practices can exact a price on the natural dynamics and subjective quality of the program material. So, to achieve any kind of loudness standard that's based on how loud the audio sounds to listeners, rather than just the level of transient peaks within the wave, different metering must be employed that provides a fuller picture of how loudness will be perceived. For both the music and broadcast industries, these tools are available, and to conform to mandated loudness levels for broadcast, very specific measurement tools are specified. Isotopes Insight and Loudness Control employ these tools and are specifically geared to help the engineer verify and meet current requirements for the loudness of audio destined for broadcast. In the next videos, I'll cover both metering and current broadcast loudness standards before we jump into the tools themselves.